Grandmother Ayahuasca lives in your inner world, in your dreams, in your DNA, and at the far reaches where the inner world merges into the imaginal. Listen for her voice, separate from yours, and in that process, you will both be transformed. From Rachel Harris's book, Listening to Ayahuasca, Ayahuasca page journal. 259. This was the first entry in my Ayahuasca journal from January 29, 2018. Dear Ayahuasca, thank you for this incredible opportunity to meet with you again. I'm truly appreciative of your insights and visions and healing work. The first time that I participated in ceremony with you. I'm extremely grateful to be here in Santorio Healing Center for the next 13 days to further explore working with you and doing more in-depth healing work. I hope that my intentions are pure and that you will assist me in learning how to love myself better and more wholly. Teach me to be open to your wisdom and grace and allow me to fully know why I'm on this planet and how to step into my callings more completely and consistently. Allow me to listen carefully and attentively to your messages so that I can live a fuller, more contented and happier life. Allow me to heal my heart and open it further so that I can be more loving and accepting of others. Allow me to continue to prepare so that I'm ready to meet my life partner and soulmate on an equal and healthy level and so we can express our life purposes together in unity and wholeness. Thank you for your patience with me and for teaching me how to better love myself so that I can love others more fully. Um, I wanted to talk about my first night at Santorio. It was the first Monday. Um, we'd gotten there that morning and then um, later in the evening we uh, had our first ceremony. Um, that was probably the most intense of the ceremonies there that I remember because, you know, I'd just gotten there, had some energy work done and then drank a full cup. I was new to the environment, new to the being in the Maloka, not sure what to expect. Um, and it was intense. It was really intense because um, I just really kind of left my body in a lot of ways. Um, I remember being in the Maloka, you know, everything being new, hearing sounds around me of people, um, you know, vomiting and people just purging, um, just being really intense. And then the, the rush just hit me and I remember um, just kind of seeing all these weird images. Um, the, the moon was out. It was a full moon as well. <laughs> so I could look outside the Maloka and I could see spirit animals dancing around and they looked really happy. They were um, jumping up on this bench out there and just kind of uh, frolicking. Um, so that was really beautiful. And then this bird, the spirit bird came into the Maloka at one point and then it went into my, it jumped into my mouth and went and I swallowed it. So it went into my body. So I did some more research on that. And the bird I could identify closely with probably is the warbler because it had a tail, kind of like a tail that came out that was a little bit flat on the end. I said the warbler is about expressing yourself, um, putting your ideas out there. Hey, that's what I'm doing with this documentary. Um, also, you know, to have more self-esteem, to really be diligent, uh, have better endurance and tenacity with things. Um, but really just expressing, getting, getting feelings out there, getting thoughts and, and that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm attempting to do here. So I thought that was an interesting revelation, um, that that bird had to say something to me and the bird actually entered my body. And so, you know, to allow me to speak more, to allow me to really put those ideas out there, be more vulnerable as well, uh, is another thing to, you know, kind of just talk about my depression, talk about my anxiety. I know anxiety is about worrying about the future. Depression is about dwelling on the past. So really teaching me how to live in the moment and not letting, you know, these things get to me. Um, really breathing. Again, the yoga has really been helping uh, mindfulness to calm my anxiety so I don't stress too much about the future, but just really focus on being in the present. About the first ceremony, too, that was just so intense, um, I really saw a lot about... Um, our current, you know, current political situation and just how corrupt it is and how, well, you know, politicians, people in, that want power, you know, and just how ego-based power is and that need for controlling people and just how damaging that is to people's souls. And I really saw that people just feeling roles, you know, not being their authentic selves because they're afraid, um, of not fitting into this kind of like twisted paradigm <laughs> that our society has built up. But people aren't like paying attention to our inner 
drives and our inner soul. So that was a big thing I learned, like how can I apply that to my life more? Um, how can I trust, you know, spirit to guide me and direct me and, and have, you know, have faith that everything's going to be okay. So that was a big revelation I wanted to share with you too. And there's interesting what uh, Joan Parsisi says in her book, um, Ayahuasca, The Visionary and Healing Powers of the Vine of the Soul. Um, and she had a thing where ayahuasca kind of works in a pattern and that, the, you know, the first session you usually have is going to be the one that cleans. So ayahuasca cleans first, then heals, then teaches. So that was um, something I read in a, one of the books when I was there, uh, which makes sense because that first session, that first Monday was really just really intense. Um, and it felt like it was just really cleaning me out. I, I lost, you know, all everything in my stomach pretty much. I mean, to where I was just puking up bile. And I remember this, this voice, the spirit saying, you know, this isn't yours. Release these energies, get these out of your system because you've been carrying this around. So let that go. Um, so, so that was another revelation. It was like, Oh, I don't have to carry other people's energies any other people's depression and sadness. I can let that go so I can better help people so that I'm not so worried about, you know, it, you know, their energy draining my energy to the Peruvian jungle here at Santorio Healing Center. I wanted to introduce you to my tambo. This is where I'm staying for the duration of our stay. It's like an isolated little hut all to myself. I'm going to be do, starting a dieta tomorrow. I've already done ayahuasca twice. So we've got four more sessions of that. Plus, I'm going to be taking a plant medicine called Ajo Sancho on alternating days. So we'll do ayahuasca one day and then the next day the plant medicine. And so I'm supposed to be alone, reflect, do a lot of journaling, see how the plan affects me. It's supposed to help me feel better emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Same with ayahuasca. I've been writing down my ayahuasca journeys too. But anyway, here is my tambo. So if I can flip this around, show you what it looks like. walk towards the tambo. I think it's going to rain. I'm hearing some thundering going on. It hasn't rained much at all since we've been here. The weather's been awesome. It's been really sunny and hot. It's really sticky. There's lots of bugs. I found a scorpion earlier in the water bucket and some interesting beetles and lots of mosquitoes. It's almost impossible to keep the mosquitoes from biting you no matter what you put on yourself. So let's head up here. I got some clothes out. I just took a shower, as you can tell. I've got my journal, water bottle. There's my lunch that I haven't eaten yet waiting for me. So this is cool. I've got this rocking chair with a mosquito net. How cool is that? So I can drape myself in that and read and write. It's got a thatched roof, A-frame. It's kind of um, slanted a little bit uh, because it's on a hill. Is over this way. That is my shower. Let me introduce you to the shower because it's starting to rain already. This is where I wash clothes. As you can see, I have some pants soaking there. Got a big water bucket for clothes. I've been staying here now since Thursday. Is that right? Or Wednesday? Anyway, got, we arrived last Monday, so we've already been here seven days. It's pretty amazing. Time flies. It is February 2nd, and I just started uh, my dieta today on Ahu Sako. Uh, Sancho Sako, it's S A C H A A J O S A C H A. So I'm still, you know, working on the pronunciation. But here it is, right here, I will show you. And I'm drinking my plant medicine again. Here it is, Ahu Sacho. And since it's not an ayahuasca day, ayahuasca nights are typically Monday, Wednesday, Friday here. So I don't drink plant medicine on those days, but every other day I do. So it tastes garlicky. I guess it's related to garlic is what I've learned. It's not exactly garlic though. It's a different um, type of plant. And I've got my water next to it that I down right after I drink it because of the garlic taste. So here we go. I'm reading a poem I wrote in the Amazon called Odu Aho Sacha. I wrote it February 4th, 2018 at 11.38 a.m. Dearest plant spirit, Aho Sacha. What do you have to teach me? I am a willing ear here to listen. I am humbled today, lonely and desiring of your attention. I accept that I will and am struggling. It's okay. It's all right. 
I won't go down without a fight. I am here to grow, to expand, to take flight, and discover all of your might. I surrender my neediness, my loneliness, my inability to truly be alone with my thoughts, because here I am facing myself in all her splendor, her glory, her grace, and full capacity for depth and space. It's February 5th, a quarter to one, and I'm not eating for the rest of the day. I should prepare for the ayahuasca ceremony tonight at 8 p.m. Uh, I just chose, normally I could eat lunch, but I just chose not to. Um, the cook actually brought me a fabulous breakfast, which was like a lunch, so that was really nice. Snoozing a lot. Uh, the rain, again, kind of kept me up. Tossing and turning last night, I woke up a, a few times. And then um, slept in, went back to sleep. I think I slept a little too much. I'm feeling kind of groggy. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, you know, what the, what's going to be the result of the plant medicine, the Ajo Sancho. Uh, I can definitely tell after I do ayahuasca, you know, even just the messages that I get, like this is really beneficial. However, I'm just not sure with the plant medicine, you know, what that entails, if it's more mood-based. <clears throat> um, you know, general feeling of, it's supposed to be, I just feel lighter. So I'm just kind of um, trying to figure that out, you know, just being patient and journaling, whatever comes up. Um, and, you know, just going from there, um, not a huge, you know, uh, extreme sort of feeling, you know, with ayahuasca, you definitely you feel, I mean, you're, you're flying, you're just like in the matrix and you're just like going, it's just like intense. So, so yeah, so that's kind of the experiment there. Um, a lot of peace and quiet out here other than the sounds of the jungle and the river. I'm seeing a lot more butterflies today, really pretty orange butterflies. Shower was a little chilly, but it woke me up, so that was helpful. Um, what else can I note that's uh, been interesting? Um, yeah, just it's been good to have time time alone. I'm doing a little bit better today than yesterday. Went on a good walk yesterday. I um, talked to the cook a bit, practicing my Spanish. He's really sweet, uh, so that kind of helped. You know, my social need. So I'm a social creature by nature. I'm not much of an introvert, although I do like spending time alone, and it's good 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 to get to know myself better. Oh, a nice thing was that. Um, I was going through some audio recordings on my phone, and when I upgraded my phone a few months ago, some recordings transferred over that it were downloaded, so that was nice. It was my Cal Rochelle reading with Michelle, the shamanic teacher, when I went through the Core Shamanic course from, it was like February of two years ago, 2016, um, like late February, where I did this Cal Rochelle reading with her. Uh, and so that was interesting to, to hear that again. Um, it reminded me again to talk with my ancestors more, to do a lot more praying to them. Uh, there's also this exercise to create an altar, which I did shortly after the original Cow Rochelle reading. But I'm going to try it again today if I can kind of pull things together with what I have out here. Um, and then my friend Jamie did my Akashic Records reading also that same year, but later in the summer, like in end of July of 2016. And at the beginning, when she goes into the Akashic Records, she sees like this kaleidoscope of light and um, patterns, which is exactly what you see in an ayahuasca ceremony. So I thought, wow, that was cool. uh, that was an interesting like um, prediction. So I was like, okay, this is cool. Uh, and then some other advice she'd given me um, about my spirit, or I guess spirit or soul being in other realms, like other galaxies, other than here, like kind of living parallel existences and but different like star systems so I was like wow that was intense um, so yeah so again I was just listening to that kind of reflecting on that uh, then I found another Carolyn Meese uh, nighttime meditation which really helped calm me down last night that was really really good to hear but yeah that's what's kind of what's been going on um, again uh, you know reflecting just really going inside myself uh, to learn more about myself accept myself, love myself unconditionally. Um, I do have like anxiety come up occasionally uh, and uh, calming myself, just really nurturing myself. Uh, and regardless, you know, I think that's something Carol Lynn Meese you know, talks about in the, in the meditation is like, are we judging ourselves? Are we judging others? You know, even when I do a recording here and I look at my, and I judge my looks, you know, like that's not good. That's not healthy for my self-esteem. Um, so what that I'm aging? So what? I mean, everyone does, and that's inevitable. Uh, 
it is okay. I, I can accept that. And, oh, look at this butterfly. Do you want to see it? It's right on my knee. Isn't that pretty? There it goes. Bye. So anyway, so that reminded me, you know, just that constant practicing the, the, the positive self-talk. Uh, being good to myself. Loving myself. And, yes, yeah, stay tuned for uh, an update tomorrow about my ayahuasca journey tonight. You know, whatever I, I feel, learn, heal, and that, I'll be sure to let you know. All right, cheers. It's quarter to noon here on February 6th, Tuesday, I believe. Yes, that's right, because we had a Monday night ceremony last night where I imbibed in ayahuasca again. The second Monday was pretty close as intensity to the first Monday. It's interesting how that works. I mean, I drank a full cup both days, whereas Wednesday of last week, I only drank like a partial cup, Wednesday and um, Friday, which actually was on Thursday. Anyway, so it was it was bizarre, uh, to say the least. I'm just really wiped out today, just resting a lot. Um, where do I begin to tell you kind of what it was like? It was uh, just really interesting. It took a while for it to kick in. I was like wondering if I had drank enough or if it was like not a strong batch. But once it did kick in, I was like, whoa. Um, I found myself going into the body of a bee. I could see myself up in this tree and in this sort of hive. Because uh, you look down and I could see that, you know, it was, it was pretty high up. But uh, I wasn't really moving. And so I was like, what's going on here? How could I be a bee and not be flying around and moving? And then on further investigation, I found out that I'm like this queen bee. Because these people, these, these other bees are feeding me, rather. Um, and it was kind of a startling effect because I was like, oh my god, I'm an insect, <laughs> you know? What do you do when you suddenly arrive to this conclusion? You're like, oh, okay. I see these other bees flying around me, coming in and out of the hive, um, and then they're feeding me things, so I must be popping out more bees. Uh, and I could just feel like I had this mask on my head because it was like, you know, the big eyes, and I felt really claustrophobic. Not a pleasant feeling. Um, and I remembered the words of... Uh, this gal like, that I met, you know, when we first came here, she's like, just surrender, just give into it, and you're going to be fine. Just allow it to unfold. And I had to just do a lot of, like, accepting of, like, insects. Okay, it's okay to be an insect. Um, I'm this bee. Hey, a queen bee. That's the best kind of bee to be, right? All this power. Just kind of, like, you know, orchestrating this hive. Um, so I just kind of rolled with that, you know, um, and just accepted the situation. Uh, and then it became a little bit easier. Uh, but it's just a lot of really, it was kind of, it was heavy for some reason, the, the experience. And I don't know if it's because I've been killing mosquitoes and feeling kind of guilty about that. But when they get into my, under my mosquito net, it's like, I don't want them there, you know? So I've kind of had like this different sort of um, view of like insects now. Trying to be a little more compassionate to them. Um, and realizing they have a purpose. Because that's one of the things you got to deal with when you're here in the Amazon jungle are cockroaches, lots of mosquitoes. As you can see, I'm already like trying to shoo them off my arm. Today's not bad. They're not, there's not a swarm of them out today, but typically they're just constantly on you. And ants, spiders, bizarre looking spiders that I'm sure are probably poisonous, so I don't want to get near them. So I'm constantly checking my, uh, my mosquito net over my bed, make sure it's tucked in so nothing can get in. And then you wake up and there's like droppings on top of it, but anyway. So it's just caused me to, to just realize, okay, insects have their place and uh, to learn how to co cohabitate with them and just accept them and just be one with them. It's kind of what I got from that. This was really, really interesting. Um, and some other things too, you know, once that kind of unfolded, I was just, just trying to, you know, make sense of it. Um... So I'm trying to think of other key things that happened in the experience. Uh, I do remember in, in this book, actually, listening to Ayahuasca by Rachel, Dr. Rachel Harris, she talks about how she's heard Ayahuasca speak to her directly, like the voice of the vine. I think Grandmother Ayahuasca traveled from the Amazon rainforest to the Western world to heal us so we can heal the earth. By falling in love with the enchanted world, we'll realize that we are caretakers of the earth and we need to heal the environmental crisis we've created. Rachel Harris is listening to Ayahuasca, page 281.
by Rachel Harris. Scheduling quiet days after a ceremony to spend time in nature allows the medicine to permeate deeply into the body. If you're in a quiet, calm environment, you'll be better able to pay attention to the subtle changes within. So I've had three ayahuasca ceremonies so far since I've been here. It's Friday and I've been here since Monday. I drank on Monday night. I drank on Wednesday and last night. Um, Monday night was a very intense uh, ceremony. I purged a ton. I cleaned my entire body out, put it that way. Um, and it's very hard to go through that, but then the next day you feel really good and you feel really clean. Um, and then the next ceremony, which was on Wednesday, uh, I had much less madre and it was very intense. I didn't purge like I did on Monday, but it was extremely intense and I thought, oh, most people could not handle this. Um, I do have some experience in this, but it was very, very intense, but it was really beautiful. I connected with, well, I guess, I connected with the source, I suppose I'd want to say. I mean, the images that I saw, the beautiful colors and everything is working harmoniously together, um, I guess it's the collective source. I was very at peace and fit right into it as we all fit right into it. And it was a very special, magical moment to feel that peaceful and that connected. Last night's ceremony was very mild. I drank very, very little. Um, after two heavy duty ceremonies, I wanted to have a very light one and that is what it was indeed. Now, when you go into ayahuasca ceremonies, it's always very important to have your um, the reason why you're there, your intention for being there. So uh, my intention for being there last night was to just open my heart and open my hot mind. And I feel really good today. So thanks for listening. Ode to the Natural World, written February 7th, 2018 at 4.22 p.m. Bathing in the wild, lush green forest of the Amazon, I contemplate the bee buzzing by. I ponder the f my future and what it will entail. I hear the earnest sounds of the boiling, hot-flowing river, and I listen intently. What do you have to tell me, nature? What do you have to say? I am all ears and heart and give my soul to you. For your untamed glory has awakened me to emotions, to hope, to love, to grace and forgiveness. I am captivated by your regeneration and ever-growing smells and sounds. It's uh, February 9th, about 12.18 here in Peru, in the Amazon jungle at Santorio Huisten Healing Center. I'm still not sure if I'm saying that right, but anyway, nonetheless, here we are. Tonight's my last ayahuasca ceremony. Yep, been here, uh, this is the sixth one so far here. Uh, yeah, so it's it's interesting. It's, um feeling a little bit off today just feeling sorry for myself just feeling isolated you know just, you know ready for it to end really honestly um it's been rough it's just you know it's a growing experience just being with yourself this long you know in these plants it's like bonding with the plants but then they're not humans right so they speak differently they have different languages and stuff such so yeah i don't know um I'm still feeling some neck pain. I did some crying actually earlier that's really helped some venting, kind of helping to to get out maybe some blocked emotions that I'm holding on to. So that helped. Um, I asked the cook when he came up to bring me breakfast if I could uh, talk to the shaman about it. And maybe he said some he might have some oil or something for it. It's just like my lower neck. It's like right in here. It's still really sore and hurts. But actually it's feeling better now that um, I did some stretches and I said I'd like I said, I had a good cry. Uh, you know, chilling out by myself, reading and journaling, and it seems pretty uh, uh, luxurious in some regards. In other regards, it's like I have to do with the cockroaches. And I saw a big, uh, I was going out last night at night, it was dark, and I saw a big tarantula. It was, uh, I was on my way up to, to get to the, um, the toilet, and there it was. I'm like, I, I'm not passing you, I'm not going to risk that. I don't even, they probably don't even bite, but they're just monstrous. They're just so big. Hairy legs. Ah! So anyway, yeah, that's, that's about it where I'm at today. Um, I feel better after crying. That's good. Just releasing things, just letting go. 
um, trying to trying to figure out you know my direction. Um, do I just keep doing the things I'm doing? Just keep doing what I want, trying to figure it out. Um, going back, I'd love to go back to school if it weren't so much money. You know, I'd love to travel more. I'd just maybe if I could just win the lottery, that would be great. I just do whatever I want, and then I think I'd be happy. <laughs> but anyway, such is life. Everyone has the same dilemma, I suppose. Just got to figure out what's important, what your values. Yeah, so um, I'll let you know how the ayahuasca ceremony goes and what other insights you come up with tonight. And let's see if I can track down the shaman and maybe get some advice on my neck. All right, cheers. Take care. Bye. And from the Peruvian rainforest jungle, February 10th, a little after 1 o'clock here. And yeah, I uh, just finished lunch. That was really tasty. Had some broccoli and some rice, brown rice and some lentils. And I think some like cut up onions and such too with the broccoli. is kind of like a mixed veggie. Anyway, I wanted to tell you about last night's ayahuasca ceremony. That was the last one that I'll do here since I've done six. We've been here for two weeks. We leave tomorrow morning. Wow. Um, I don't know if I could say it's gone fast. I mean, sort of, you know, in a, in a way. But there were times, right, that, that um, felt really slow and days that, that, that dragged on just because you're in the jungle. There's not a lot to do, especially being on a plant dieta. Uh, today's my last day of Ajo Sacha. And uh, that's really helped with my joints, really helped with my neck, to loosen my neck up. Uh, it's been awesome. Really calming. It's a type of, like, garlic. I have a wild garlic. It's a little bit different than standard garlic, of course, but um, it's got a lot of medicinal properties. So I'm definitely going to look it up when I get back to the States and probably take more of it. Um, but other than that, the, uh, ayahuasca last night was really good. Uh, it took a while to kick in. It was really unique this time in that... Um, it didn't really kick in until after I met with the shaman for the individual healing. When during the, you know, like halfway through the session, uh, the shaman calls people up one by one. And then they blow into your crown chakra, into your head, into the back of your neck, uh, your heart chakra. Uh, and you know, sing the Icaros around you as well. And then blow into your hands. And this is with the uh, Mapacho tobacco. So, um... That was just really interesting, yeah, because I, I kept waiting for it to kick in. Uh, you know, laid there, laid there, and it was just kind of, you know, it starts, the sensations in my body, I can feel those. My toes start tingling, and then um, my ear was really, really tingling, too, for a while. And, um, you know, it just kind of rolls through your body. Uh, but no visuals, no kind of, um, you, know, uh, you know, the psychedelic effects that people talk about. Didn't have those for a while, yeah, and then... After I went up for my healing, came back, and it was like, boom, then it hit. And then I was just like, I was just feeling blissed, bl feeling blissed out. It was awesome. It was just really comforting. I didn't see any insects. Um, still felt like the jungle, like, you know, just the whole environment. Just felt felt earthy, just felt, um, just really kind of takes me into that um, that feeling uh, of just, just being one with the earth, really. Uh, one with... One with everything, you just feel like really accepted and really loved. Uh, that's how I could just describe it. Also, my grandmother appeared. I had a scene show uh, pop up that I was sitting in the kitchen with my grandma, you know, when I was a kid. I was probably, you know, like six or seven or something, you know, and she would, I'd go and visit her and she'd feed me breakfast, make me breakfast, and taught me how to, to make eggs, you know. And uh, it was just, it was sweet. It's just a really sweet moment. I started crying because I really miss her. You know, she passed away years ago. Um, both her and my, my grandfather on my dad's side have passed away. And uh, I just really felt her presence there. I just really felt like, you know, she was like, you know, with me in that moment. Um, it was that flashback and you know, even her spirit was there. So that was just really touching. Really appreciated that. Had a good release. Um... And, uh, you know, that was the main thing as far as memories go for last night's session. Um, just a lot of comforting, just felt a lot of like, um, you know, just felt good. So that was, that was nice. Didn't have that paranoia that I've had in previous ones where that my fears come up and I'm like, oh, you got to deal with your fear because you still have a lot of it, you know, <laughs> you're afraid of like a panther in the forest and there aren't any panthers here, although there could be, I don't know, you know, Jungle Book was one of my favorite stories. <laughs> uh, I have my panther t-shirt on actually there it is <laughs> so yeah so that was the story of last night's ayahuasca ceremony so pretty pretty cool yeah definitely recommend it you gotta try it 
Um, sometimes I used to get a little freaked out, like I could have done a full cup last night, but I was like, the half cup, you know, just kind of gets you to where you're just really feeling, really feeling good. Um, a full cup sometimes can, can feel like it's just intense. You're just like, boom, into it, and it's just like electric. I mean, even with a half cup, I have a hard time getting to sleep afterwards. Like, I'm still buzzing. I still saw, like, white kind of uh, free-flowing forms that were swimming around in my head after I was already, you know, up in my cabin trying to get some sleep. Um, I just feel like it's just in that intensity, you know. It's just, um, afterwards, it takes a while to wind down, definitely, because it's, it's electric. You're, like, in it, you know. Um, and I feel this the day after I just feel really calm, just really relaxed, um, and just my mood improves, you know, maybe you can tell, but, um, I just, it's just like kind of a little bounce in my step, um, that's really nice, and I just hope it's something that'll keep carrying on, you know, keep, keep taking it with me to back to the States, you know, when things start getting stressful and whatnot, uh, but, uh, it's, it's a good thing, uh, yeah, I really appreciated being here, you know. Uh, and, you know, you got to go through your, your discomfort zone, you know, push through it sometimes. Because um, it's, it's, it's a jungle, right? You don't know what to expect. There's insects, there's all sorts of things. And just being with yourself, you know, that's a lot of it is I learned um, just how to be with myself and how to be patient with myself. Uh, you know, how to journal and just, just accept, you know, whatever's going on with me. Just if I need to cry, if I need to vent, uh, you know, reading is good too. read like three books. Uh, just to pass the time and learn and it's nice to be able to finish a whole book like that quick instead of you know having to drag on forever or getting distracted by other things I found that um, you get distracted by the internet a lot so I want to try to really curb that and not be on Facebook as much and you know just just being able to sit with a book and really just enjoy it you know and just really learn from it and finish it have more commitment <laughs> so uh, yeah those are some insights that I that I can share with my uh, two weeks here at Santorio Wellness Center, Santorio Healing Center, <laughs> right outside of uh, Pocolpa in Peru, in the Amazon rainforest, right by the Boiling River. That's their unique uh, signature, is this amazing Boiling River. So let me show it to you real quick here. You can see the steam coming up. This bridge is what gets you to the main camp on the other side of the river. So when you come in, you gotta cross the bridge. You get, so anytime you wanna come over the other side of the river, you gotta cross the bridge, walking over scalding water. Thanks for watching and catch you on the flip side. Have a great day. Cheers. It is February 10th, 2019 now. So it's a year after I um, finished my ayahuasca retreat down in, outside of Pulcopa in Peru in the Amazon rainforest. So I wanted to do um, a reflection a year later and just kind of talk about some things um, after, you know, I came back and did the integration work and have been processing my experience there. Um, putting together this documentary, um, you know, these videos I recorded and, uh, so I wanted to, to end with the reflection after a year. Um, so let's so see, where do I begin? <laughs> um, I feel like I've, I've noticed that I'm a lot more grounded now. I feel like I'm a lot more centered, more kind of in my body than I used to be. Um, and, um, you know, the, the visions I've had, I'm still processing, you know, what the queen bee means, um, and what the, the, the other things are. Um, I know I, I'm experiencing a lot less neck pain now. That was one of my things was like, what's, what's going on with my neck? Why does it hurt all the time? Um, if I'm on the computer too much and I'm not watching my posture, then that definitely will still affect my neck. But, um, I've recently done a, been doing a lot more yoga. I'm taking a practitioner course now to do 200 hours of yoga and that's just had phenomenal effects on me as well um and just just realizing that i'm going to be 50 this year and i need to move my body i need to constantly be working at stretching you know walking exercise things like that um and uh it's just one of those things that uh you know is important and i'm not sure if that's you know a direct direct relevation from ayahuasca or not but um you know, definitely the self-care, you know, just realizing, you know, the need to take better care of myself. Um, and Ajo Sacho is interesting because recently I've gone back to taking uh, garlic, cutting up garlic and put, putting a lot of garlic in my diet because of a candida overgrowth that I was experiencing, which was just draining my energy. This is zapping uh, that and uh, cutting back way on my sugars, on my carbohydrates, trying to do more paleo um, eating and, um, you know, getting those 
you know, types of things into my diet that are healthy. Um, so similar to the ayahuasca diet, but different. Um, the ayahuasca diet, again, too, is a lot, a lot of bland foods, no pork. Um, you know, these important things you have to do before you prepare uh, for the ceremonies so that your body is, is receptive to the plant spirit and the energies and things that happen with that. So I do encourage you to research that before you are, you know, go to do an ayahuasca session. It's very important, especially if you're taking antidepressants or pharmaceuticals. You have to be off them for a few months before you can even drink the ayahuasca. Um, you know, and coffee and all of that at least two days before, you know, and this, you know, no spices, no, anything that would br bring up an um, amino acid called tyramine into your body um, because ayahuasca is considered an MA, MAIO. And so it automatically helps the, the amino acids to reproduce in your body. So you don't want to have that conflict. Um, that's really important. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's been subtle, the changes that I've noticed. Um, you know, you know, it's not a magic pill by any means. It's definitely a process, you know, and the, you know, the shamans, they, they live that, you know, the, the native peoples of Peru and the Amazon jungle. I mean, they constantly were taking ayahuasca for clarity and for visions. Um, and so it's, it's more ingrained in their life, you know, with, with us in the Western world. Um, it is something that it's a consistent thing. You know, I probably will want to do it again sometime to, to continue the healing path. It's kind of like peeling layers off an onion, you know, you heal some, some wounds, maybe from childhood wounds, um, you know, and, and work on, on any sort of grief work that you have. I have processed a lot of grief, um, in the last year, you know, just, just working on getting better and better with my depression and, um, being able to have more positive outlook on life. Um, so that's definitely improved. I've noticed, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's all, it's all a journey. Um, I definitely feel a lot better being alone. Um, I, I feel like I've turned more into an introvert than I used to be. I used to need to go out and be around people all the time. And now I'm really selective about that. I want it to be fulfilling. I want it to be meaningful. You know, when I'm around people, I have a hard time in noisy clubs anymore with these superficial conversations, you know, um, when you, you know, get more into the healing arts and, and, um, you, you know, you want to be out in nature. You want to be, um, around people that are positive and uplifting. And so, you know, I've had to be more careful in that regard. And, um, I don't drink much anymore, just very rarely. Um, I did a fast actually after New Year's, so I haven't had any alcohol for over a month now. Um, and I never had a serious problem with it before, but, um, you know, cause I'm eliminating sugars from my diet. So that was one thing that had to go. And yeah, so my altar is here. It's kind of, I built this up over the last year. Um, you know, one of my spirit guides is the black crow, black panther. Um, you know, I've also got an eagle and uh, groundhog, a snake and a dolphin. So I've just been, you know, remembering to pay more attention to them and you know, what they have to share with me. Just being more open to that. Again, sometimes it's hard, you know, just get, get kind of get into the workday world. You go to work, you know, and you try to visit with friends and, you know, things kind of take precedence, you know, trying to pay the bills and make money. So that's just one thing I'm working on is like not leaving my, you know, spiritual self in the dark and, you know, taking care of my physical self and all the other layers of that we have, right? In yoga, there's like all these different layers that I'm learning about of our bodies and cosmic bodies and all that. So it's all really fascinating. And uh, yeah, so that's one year post ayahuasca retreat. So I did six ayahuasca, ayahuasca sessions there, uh, ceremonies, um, last year at this time. And uh, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed this documentary. Again, um, just a glimpse into, you know, a couple of people's experience in a retreat, Peru, Santuario Healing Center. So you could research that some more too and learn more and, uh, you know, thank you for listening and um, hope you learned something from this documentary and uh, get you talking, get you thinking about psychedelics and ayahuasca and healing paths, natural healing paths. All right. Thanks for your time and have an awesome day. Medicina. Ya 
lindo espírito runa poderoso chamuriri vuelta vuelta mariri 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 si sai puta